Come on, give God one more hand of praise. Hallelujah. You are holy, Lord, so holy. You are holy, Lord, so holy. What a privilege and an honor to worship at your throne, to be called I can't even. 
one so worthy. There is no one so righteous. There is no one, no one, no one, no one. Because Jesus wins. He went to Calvary. Oh, to save a wretch. Like you and me. You and me, you and me, but I'm so glad that's not how the story is. Because early one Sunday morning, in three days, he rose up, he rose up with all power, with all power, with all power, with all power. No one so powerful. No one so mighty. There is no one. There is no one like you. Cause you saved my soul. And you made me whole. Feel you feel me. With the Holy Ghost. And that with fire, that with fire, that with fire. No one so holy. Oh, there is no one so holy. There is no one so holy. There is no one, no one, no one, no one. There is no one. Hallelujah! There is no one! Hallelujah! There is no one like you! Ooh. I'm gonna give it up for Elder Peaster! about God. There's nobody, nobody can do you like him. Nobody, 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 nobody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. How? I feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah. Do me like you. Nobody can save me. Nobody can feel me. Nobody, nobody. I almost had a fit. Oh. Hey, thank you, Elder. Hey, come on, I'm all shot. I'm all shot. Hey, hallelujah. Come on and rest on your feet. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. Yes, God. Oh, God. Let's get some volume on the mic for our speaking. Hallelujah. Let's rest on our feet. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. And we received tonight for the first time, amen, this young lady who is here to present the word of God. Amen. This will be her first time here at Mount Zion. Amen. But we know her foundation and where she comes from and where she received God. And that's at the Full Gospel Holy Temple Church in Dallas. Amen. Amen. Where Bishop Murray is her pastor. And we are familiar with him. Isn't that right? Amen. We know he's been here to preach. And his brother, 
Reverend Patrick Murray and, and, and so many others, the Mosses, and I mean, they even know so many others that came from full gospel. We love the, the bishop, apostle, amen. We've known them, amen. So we thank God for her coming tonight, amen. Let's receive with a hand clap of praise and welcome her for the first time, Sister Evangelist Naisha Henderson. Come on and put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. I don't need no hand clapping, but come on and give it to him on tonight. Because he's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. I'm talking about Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. First, give it honor to God who's the head of my life. I thank God for being here on tonight. I thank God to the shepherd of this house as well as the first lady. I thank God as well for my, my pastor, Apostle uh, Herman Murray, and first lady, Danielle Murray, and uh, evangelist Dr. Shirley Murray. Thank God for Minister Wafer, for Brother Jeremiah Sneed. I thank God for my friend on tonight, Sister Buckner. And uh, it, it, I know we've done a lot of singing, but this song has been in my spirit all week. All week. So we can go a little old school real quick. Praise him, praise him. Come on, if you know it, sing it with me. Praise him, praise him. What's his name? Jesus, ha. Huh. Blessed Savior, he's worthy. Lift your voice and help me sing it on tonight. Come on and praise him. Sing it like you mean it. Praise him. Come on and open up your mouth and praise. I like to call on him, Jesus. He's my blessed Savior. He is worthy. They got a verse that say, from the rising of the sun, rising up, until the setting of the sun. Say, Jesus is worthy. Jesus is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. Just praise him because he's worthy of the glory and he's worthy of the honor. Come on and praise him. I like to call on him. Help me call his name. Come on and say, Jesus, be praised. Come on and help me say, Jesus, Jesus, come on and help me call his name on tonight. You may know him as a bird and barrel, as a heavy load sheriff, as a hard fixer. He's my mind regulator. You're welcome here in this place, Jesus. Come on and stop by here, Jesus. Stop by here, Jesus. Meet the knees on tonight, Jesus. Make a way on tonight, Jesus. Open doors on tonight, Jesus. Come on and help me call this day. Bless the Savior. He's worthy to be praised. Romans, come on, 
and get your Bibles. We're coming out of the book of Romans, the 13th chapter. Hallelujah, Jesus. Romans, the 13th chapter. And the 11th through the 14th verse. Again, it's the book of Romans, the 13th chapter. The 11th through the 14th verse. And if you have it, just say amen. And the Bible reads as thus, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first, excuse me, than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in shambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. You may be seated on tonight. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearers and the readers and the doers of his holy word. And I just want to impart this thought into your mind. And everyone knows the, the time we're living in. Everyone sees how our world is being turned upside down. The world now is openly embracing everything that the devil has to offer. While the people of God, now when I say the people of God, don't, don't think I'm talking about you unless I'm talking about you. Amen. While the people of God forbear the gospel to be and only taught within the four walls of the church. But it is time now to become cognizant and realize the time that we are living in. To the world, God is becoming a distant memory of a, a fictional character or a figment of the imagination. We need to realize that we are living in a world that is hostile to the things of God. The people of God should be living with a new urgency and must have an awakening. Look to your neighbor to the left and the right of you and help me announce my text and say, neighbor, a wake-up call. Come on, look to the other neighbor on the other side and say, neighbor, we need a wake-up call. Now, the Bible says here in Romans 13 and 11 that Paul now admonishes us in the scriptures to know the time that is in hand. There is now an urgency within the earth. People are now adopting a YOLO mentality. I don't know if you're familiar with the street phrase YOLO, which means you only live once. If you go into the flea market, you may see the hat that say YOLO. They got the t-shirt that say YOLO. They may have the bracelet that say YOLO, the socks that say YOLO. And so they have this, which means it's an attitude that says live life as much as you possibly can to the fullest. Do whatever you want. Do whatever you want because you only live once. We're disregarding the fact that there is an afterlife after this life. So, but while we're being so busy living our life to the fullest, the eyes of the earth have been blinded and the minds have become ignorant to the enemy and his devices. He is manipulating the minds and the hearts of the people, causing people to fight for things which are wrong and contrary. And we shun the things which are right and truthful. Paul says that we must know the times that we are living in. This is truly a critical hour, amen? The Bible says in Matthew 24, the disciples begin to ask Jesus, Jesus, what will be the sign of your coming? And how will we know when the world will come to an end? And Jesus told his disciples, he said, many will come in my name, claiming that they are the Christ and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be a famine and pestilence, which means viruses and diseases and earthquakes, and these things are just the beginning. Paul says, you must know the times that we're living in. 
Knowing the times that we're living in, America is falling to her grave. The devil is running rapid and causing chaos throughout the land. He is taking over our television stations, and he's taking over our, rel uh, our radio uh, stations, and he's taking over the, our schools and the minds of our children. He's taking over the minds of our people. He's taking over the minds of the government. He's taking over, and he's running rapid through the land. He's all in the social media networks. He's, he's in our conversations, and he's now even in the church. Come on, help me, somebody. Just give me a few amens. I'm, I'm almost gone. But I come to serve notice on today that God is sending a wake-up call to the people of God. Slumber and sleep no more. Hallelujah. It's high time to awake out of slowfulness. It's time to awake out of laziness. It's time to awake out of carnality. It's time to awake from an outward religion but an inward damnation. Awake out of being lazy, being sluggish, focusing more on the world than of the things of God. It's time for the church at large to wake up. This is a wake up call. It's a wake up call. Paul said, you must know the times that we are living in, yes. but we're sleeping. Yes. Well, how is that I'm sleeping? Because we're not doing nothing. Yes. Come on and help me on tonight. Yes. We're sleeping, the church at large. Yes. We're sleeping. And God is saying, this is a wake up call. Wake up and focus on the things which are above. It's time out for acting out church. It's time out for, for, uh, for playing church. We know how to hold our backs and run across the floor. We, we know how to shout and we know how to, we know how to speak in tongues and we know how to do the prayer. We know the church cliches. We know how to, uh, to, do, to do the footwork across the floor and run up and down the aisle. We know how to roll across the floor. We know everything, how to do church. We know how to act church. We know how to play church. We know how to be fake church, and we know how to do all these things. But God is requiring now for us to be the church. It's not the buildings or the four walls, but God is requiring you to be the church. He's requiring on today. It's not enough just to declare faith. I got faith. And it's not enough to be sure just about your salvation and that you're headed to heaven and you're unprepared and you're undressed. I said you're unprepared and you're undressed. You can't go to work with your pajamas on. But when you get up in the morning, what you got to do? You got to get dressed and you got to get ready to go to your destination. And can I tell you all tonight, thanks of God, that our destination is heaven. And you can't be unprepared, but God is calling for us to be prepared and to get dressed. Be but you have to be dressed and you have to be ready to go. You must put on the whole army of God that you may be able to withstand the trials and the wiles of the enemy. You can't fight the devil in pajamas. I said you can't fight the devil in pajamas. You can't fight the devil being lazy and being comfortable, but you have to get up and you have to get dressed. The Bible says having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking on the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It's time for us as people of God to get dressed because I decree and I declare that if the homosexual can go out and ramp and raid about being glory gay and if the adulterer can be uh, outwardly uh, adulterous and the fornicator can sleep around with everybody, it's time for the people of God to stand and be accounted for in this hour. It's time for a wake up call in the midst of the church. It's time out that everything is going on nowadays. You can go to this city and get married and come back and live in this city. It's preachers are not saying nothing. Nobody's doing nothing. It's time to wake up. God is calling for us to wake up. It's time to wake up and get dressed. It's not enough just being saved and sanctified and Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. And it's not enough just saying the words, but you got to actually live something. You got to actually be ready. 
And God is calling us to wake up. You have to realize that you're not on borrowed time. You didn't earn this time. You didn't work for this time. It's borrowed. Borrowed means it was loaned to you, and you got to give it back. But while you have it, what are you doing with it? Come on, this is a wake-up call on tonight. I want you to get the gist of what the Lord is trying to say, that God is calling for the saints of God to get up, to square your shoulders, and whatever the enemy is throwing at you, you better hold on to God's unchanging hand. It doesn't matter whatever he's trying to do. You get you a backbone, and you tell the devil he a lie, and you fight the enemy with power. Whatever comes against you, And whatever may come your way, God has given us power to resist the devil and he will flee. I'm not scared of no enemy because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Greater is he than the homosexual. Greater is he than the fornicator. Greater is he than the liar and the backbiter and the hypocrite and the lazy and the slothful. Understand who you serve. It's time to understand and wake up and realize the God that we serve because I've realized on tonight that in the end despite what I go through despite what I'm facing despite what he throws at me I'm still a victor in the end I read the book and in the end I win The Bible says we got to forsake the world's way and cast off the works of darkness. We got to cast off robbery, which is wild partying, drunkenness, not in shivering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Understand. That God wants you to cast off the works of darkness. You know, it's none of us in here. But you have to understand that people of God are still going to the clubs. Uh, we, we quiet. Praise God. He said we have to cast off the works of darkness. You got to cast it off. Come on, y'all can sit down. I'm sorry. Y'all can sit on down. Let me talk to you for a minute. Because during this time, He said, you have to cast off the works of darkness. And many times we read in scriptures like these where they actually point out and categorize sin. And we think he's not talking to us. But what you have to understand that in this chapter, in these verses, Paul ain't talking to the sinner. Paul is talking to the saints. He's talking to the Christians at large, letting you know that you have to know the time. And it's high time to wake up out of your sleeping. Because during a wake-up call, let me let you know what a wake-up call is. During a wake-up call in this instance, when something is drawing nearer or coming closer, one must be alerted so that they may take action. For example, if there is a tornado warning in the city and it's drawing nearer to your county, they don't send warning when it gets there. But the county begins to send the sirens. He begins to sound the sirens. The the news interrupts the television stations and the radio stations, and they begin to sound the alarm and let the people know that something is coming, and it's time to take cover. Well, I just want to let the saints of God know on tonight that it's time for us to sound the alarm in the earth and let people know that something is coming. It's coming. It may not be when you want it to be. Just because Jesus hasn't come yet don't mean he ain't coming. People getting so lazy and so lax because Jesus hasn't came yet. But God still made us a promise that he's coming back. Ready or not, he's coming back. And it's time to go out and sound the alarm and tell this dying and lost generation to come out. Come out wherever you are. Come out of your sin. Come out of this darkness and live the life that 
church you're supposed to live. Come on, where the Christians at? Where the real believers, please stand up. Where the real saints of God, please stand up. It's time out for coward Christians. It's time out for scared Christians. It's time out for lazy Christians. But God gave us a mandate. And just because you've been saved 10 or 20 years, the mandate still stands. God has an assignment over your life. God has purpose for you. He has a plan for you. And it's time to walk in it and let the devil know you had your best shot, devil, but I'm still standing. You had your best shot. You hit my finances, but I'm still standing. You took away my stuff, but I'm still standing. You took away, you found me in my body, but I'm still standing. With the real saints of God, please stand up. Charge yourself. We got a God. We got a God to live for. We got a choice to keep and a God to glorify. I told God that I will serve him until I die. Come rain, sleet, or snow. Every fire and trial. Everything that come my way. I made a commitment. I made a vow to the Lord. And I won't take it back. What about you? What about you on tonight? This is a wake up call to the church at large. It's time to go out and do what God has called us to do. Jesus told his disciples to go out into the world and preach this gospel. Preach the good news of Jesus Christ that he's coming back again. It's time to wake up, sound the sirens, sound the alarm, sound everything you can find. Ring the bell that Jesus, he's coming back again. Don't you forget it. Don't get lazy. Don't get sluggish. But Jesus, he's coming back again. Ready or not, he's still coming. Ready or not, he's still coming. It's time to get up and it's time to get dressed. Put your war clothes on. Put your fighting clothes on. Put your warfare clothes on. And fight the enemy. Fight the enemy that's trying to take over our schools. Fight the enemy that's trying to take over our government. Fight the enemy that's trying to take over our finances. Fight the enemy that's trying to take over the earth. Because the earth is still the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and everything that dwell in it. For he established it upon the seas. And he established it upon the floods. Who shall be able to ascend into the hill of the Lord? He that has clean hands and a pure heart that has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. This is the generation of them that seek him. So lift up your hands, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory, he shall come in. Who is this King? He's the Lord, strong and mighty. Who is this King? He's the Lord, mighty in battle. Who is this King? He's the beater of my heart. Who is this King? He made something out of nothing. Who is this King? Isaiah called him the Prince of Peace, mighty God. He shall be called. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, mighty king. You may not know him like that, but I know him like that. His name is Jesus. It's Jesus. He's coming back. It's not a bird. It's not a plane. But it's Jesus. He's about to crack the sky. Ready or not. Here he calls. It's time to wake up. It's time to do right. It's time to step out. It's time to sit down. Put a difference between. Clean it up clean. Put a difference between.
between. Hold it on, hold it. Cast out the works of darkness. It's a wake up call. It's a wake up call. Wake up. The alarm is sounded. Jesus is coming back. And don't you forget it. Don't you forget it. While you're living your life. Don't you forget it. That he's coming back. And I just want to encourage you tonight. To stay with God. I just got to encourage you all tonight that you got to stay with God. That's the only way you're going to be able to make it. That's the only way you're going to be able to take it. You got to stay with God. Regardless if friends may leave you. People may talk about you. But you got to stay with God. No matter what comes and no matter what goes, you got to stay with God. Come on, you got to stay with God. This is a wake-up call. I know you can't shout to this message. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you can't do your footwork to this message. But it's a wake-up call on tonight. Because Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle or a blemish or any such thing when Jesus returns will he find faith on the earth where are the believers where are the believers where are the believers there's so much going on in the earth and we sitting and we sleeping and we sitting and sleeping with our pajamas on. Comfortable and lazy. Comfortable and slow. Comfortable and in our comfort zone. But God said this is a wake up call. Something is coming. Something is coming. The Bible says when the trumpet sound, the dead in Christ will rise first. And those that remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. Something is coming. And it's time for us as the church, we cannot be silent. God said we can't be silent. Because he said, if you be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. This is just a wake-up call to the church of Lord. You can stand to your feet. I'm done. I'm, I don't preach long. But this is just a wake-up call to the church at large. God is requiring more of us, more out of us. We are the light of the world, a city that is set upon a hill that cannot be hidden. The Bible says we are the salt of the earth, but what happens when the salt loses its savor? Good for nothing. It's time out for playing. It's time out for thinking that we got all the time in the world. God said Jesus is coming back, and this is just a wake-up call. With everything that's going on in the earth, remember you're on borrowed time. It's a life after this life. And with your time, what are you doing with it? Children of God, my friend had preached a message a while back. He said, children of God die empty. We don't die full. That which we have, we give it out. We die empty. It's time for us to start fasting and praying and reading our word, not just out of routine. But God is requiring more out of us because we walk past people every day. 
and we don't say nothing. We walk past the lie every day, and we don't say nothing. Instead of, us, instead of us being different, we are befriending the enemy. Because we're thinking that the world are having so much fun. And I just want to be like the world. But understand, we wasn't sent on the earth to have fun. Because this world is not our home. The old folk used to say, I'm just a stranger passing through. And I'm just trying to take everybody to heaven as, I, as many people to heaven as I can. And that should be our mindset now. This is the wake up call, saints. Children of God. God is saying, wake up out of your slumber. Slumber and sleep no more. It's so much stuff going on in the earth. And we just letting it pass us by. Disregarding the time. But God just sent me here to let you know that it's time to wake up and do something. And get dressed and be ready. Be ready to go. Be ready to go because you may not go up when he comes. But tomorrow is not promised. What are you doing with your time? It's borrowed. And what happens when the Lord wants his time back? What happens when he wants it back? What have you done with the time that is given? Because the Bible says that people are going to say, Lord, I casted out devils in your name. Lord, I sung Zion songs. I shouted all across the floor. And he's still going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I don't know you. It's not about what you show on the outside, but what your heart look like. It's not about what you do on the outside, but what the inside of your house look like. It's time to wake up, saints of God, and get serious about the things of God. Because ready or not, here he come. Come on and give Jesus a hand clap. Will there be one on tonight? Will there be one on tonight? You may say, I don't know Jesus in the pardon of my sins. You may say, I don't know him like I thought I did. 1 Corinthians 15 and 34, it says, awake to righteousness. Awake to it. Do it. And don't sin, because those that thought they knew God don't really know him. Because he said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Is there one on tonight? You may be saved and be like, Lord, I haven't really been doing what I'm supposed to be doing. You may be saved and sanctified, but just because you come to the altar don't make you any less saved and sanctified. You just got to come be real with yourself. The Bible says let a man examine himself. But if all is well on tonight, I give you back into the hands of the minister of the hour. Y'all pray for me. Come on, let's give our speaker a hand. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Did y'all enjoy that word tonight? Amen. But anybody, anybody need prayer tonight? I know there's a need in the house tonight. Come to the altar. Let God meet your need on tonight. Our speaker is here. Amen. And she's here to pray with you. So any, anybody, anybody. Amen. I know there's been some needs this week. God has, has done some things for us. Amen. But there's still some needs that need to be met on tonight. Amen. And I'm just sending another plea out that you would come. Amen. Somebody needs to be delivered. Somebody needs to be saved. Amen. You need to send proxy for somebody. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't sit on what God. If you come tonight, God might change your situation when you get back home tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah.